In this video, we're going to be taking a look at different types of energy, energy bar graphs, also known as LOL diagrams because of the initial bar graph, the system, and then the second bar graph at its final position. So in this scenario, we have position A, where a card is compressed into a spring, goes around the track, and then at the top of the loop is position B, which is our final position. Okay, so first of all, we want to make sure we're aware of what questions to ask ourselves to determine how much of each type of energy we have. So for EK, kinetic energy, we want to ask ourselves, is the object moving? And then if so, how fast? For EG, gravitational potential energy, we're asking ourselves, does it have some height off the ground and then for elastic potential energy is something stretched or compressed and then the final type of energy we're going to be looking at is thermal energy which we'll call ETH. And in that case, generally speaking, is there some sort of friction or collision? Okay, now there's a bunch of other scenarios that may cause some thermal energy to be created, but generally speaking, a lot of times it is often created by friction between two surfaces or a collision between two objects. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started with our first diagram. With our first diagram, we have um, the EKEG EL in the beginning at the end, and then also some thermal energy at the end, and we're taking a look at position A or B. So we're gonna take a look at four different sets of energy bar graphs describing the same situation. So each one is dependent on some different factors. So the big factor is the system. So first of all, we're always gonna include the Earth because you wouldn't have any gravitational potential energy without the Earth's gravitational field. We also have the cart, the track, and the spring. Okay, so that's everything in my picture. So in a case like this, where we're including every single thing in our system, we should have the same amount of energy at position A as we do at position B, because of the conservation of energy, the system's total energy is gonna remain constant from position A to position B. So in the very beginning, is it moving? Does it have height? Is something stretched or compressed? It looks like the only thing that the answer is yes to, something is stretched or compressed, which is the spring. So we're gonna go ahead and give it five blocks of energy. So one, two, three, four, five. So I know in the end, I'm gonna also have five blocks of energy to make sure that energy is conserved. Now at position B, it definitely has a lot more height off the ground. It has little lines back here to show that it's in motion. And just by my own judgment, it looks like because it's at the top of the loop, we'll maybe say that it has a little bit more gravitational potential energy than kinetic energy. So I gave it uh, three blocks of gravitational potential and then two blocks of kinetic to make sure I equal the five blocks of elastic that was given to it initially. So that is our first situation. Our second one, what we're going to do is we are going to have the same exact system as our first one, but I'll just shorthand it and say E, C, T, and S for earth, cart, track, and spring. Okay, now for this one, we are going to include friction. So for our second one, things are going to be pretty similar. In the beginning, we for sure are going to have a bunch of elastic potential energy. I'll give it the full five bars. But then as it moves along the track, it's going to be creating thermal energy. 
and it's going to be creating heat between the wheels and the track. So as the cart itself heats up the track, the cart itself is going to lose energy because it's giving energy to the track in the form of thermal energy. So let's say that it gives it about one block of thermal energy. Now that takes away from our five total blocks. So we'll have about four blocks left. So maybe I'll give three blocks to gravitational potential energy and then one block to kinetic. Cause it looks like if we're gonna use that same exact picture, but include friction, then the main difference is gonna be, it's gonna reach that same exact height. So it should have the same amount of gravitational potential energy. But in this case, because some of that thermal energy was given to the track, it's not gonna be going quite as fast at the top of that loop. So I'm gonna shrink that kinetic energy down to one block. Either way, I still have one, three, and one. So five blocks total energy is still conserved even though we're using friction. Okay, now for our final two, what we're gonna do is we are going to change up our system. Our system now, will change it to the earth, cart, and then the track. Now, in this case, we are not including the spring, so anything that involves a spring shouldn't be part of the bars that we're drawing. So when we ask ourselves, is it moving? Does it have height off the ground? Is something stretched or compressed? The answer is no. So no to any of those. So we have no energy, but we know that the spring, something outside the system is pushing energy into the system. So we'll say work is being done on the system. So the work by the spring. So I'll give it a little subscript so we know where it came from. So work is the amount of energy transferred. So we have some amount of energy transferred into our system. And then from there, everything is actually going to be pretty similar to how it was before. We are going to have some amounts of gravitational potential energy and kinetic energy. Okay. Now it doesn't have to be some very specific amounts like I picked here because you wouldn't know for sure how much the spring gave it. Um, but again, I just assumed that it got the full five bars initially from that work done. So then I distribute it as three and two bars for our position B at the top of the track here. So for our final setup, what we're going to do is we're going to include the earth cart and spring. And this one, we are going to include friction again. All right, so in this case, um, do we have something stretched or compressed? Is something off the ground? Is something moving? Yes, for something stretched or compressed because the spring is back in our system. And then afterwards, um, we are including friction, but we're not including the track. So remember when there's friction, the friction is between the cart and the track. And because the cart is rubbing against the track, um, both of them are technically getting heated some, so there's some thermal energy being released. So in this case, we're going to say that work is going out of the system. So instead of work being done on the system, the system is doing work to pass energy onto the track. So that means some energy is leaving. So if we initially had five bars, then we want to make sure we have something less than five bars for our position B. So we still have that gravitational potential energy that we originally had. So we'll go ahead and say we have three bars. And then maybe we'll go ahead and say we do have that one bar of kinetic energy, but we aren't going to include that thermal energy that we did for this one because we don't have the track in our system. So we have work leaving and the work is going out to the track. Okay, so we have four different situations here. I would say the one that we most typically use or I most typically use would be including everything into the system that works out nicely so that you can keep track of the amount of energy before and the amount of energy after and make sure that they're always equivalent. Now, if you are including friction, then the object itself will tend to lose some gravitational potential energy or kinetic energy in a lot of cases. And then some of that thermal energy is gonna be built up. So as that thermal energy rises, our other bars of energy are going to decrease some, but the energy is still conserved in the system because um, we still included all of the objects within the system right here.
Now, when something is excluded from the system, you need to think about is energy going in or out of the system? That's why it says system and flow. In this one, we have the spring outside of it. So we had 0% energy in the beginning, but then as the problem started, we had work being put into the system by something else. And then now we have our bars of energy at the very end. Our final situation is where energy is leaving the system. So the initial energy that we have is going to be greater than the final energy that we have because some of it is leaving the system. So the energy is still conserved overall if you're considering everything in the environment. But considering the system that we put here, we still have work going out into the track. So we won't have that full five bars of energy. We're going to end up with four because a little bit of energy went out to the track. So those are all the different various situations of how to draw the LOL graphs or energy bar graphs, depending on what you have for your system or your scenario. So I hope that was helpful to you. Thank you for watching and listening.